A full startup disk is something every Mac user will experience, and luckily it's a problem that has many solutions. So in this video, we'll go over several things you can do to fix a startup disk full problem. Number one is empty the trash. Seriously, it may sound basic, but it really is the first thing you should do. See, when you delete a file, your Mac just moves it to the trash, so it's still sitting there and wasting your disk space. Get rid of all that junk by emptying the trash. Control, click, your trash in the dock. Select and click Empty Trash, and the easiest step is done. As we move forward and clean up the junk on your disk, the trash will fill up again, but don't worry. We'll empty it once more in the end. Now, let's clean your desktop. Get rid of the stuff you don't need on there, like old screenshots and app icons and all the other junk. It looks better and helps your Mac act a bit faster. I don't know the rocket science behind this one, but it actually works. Uh, next, clean up your downloads, movies, and music folders. And these are the top three folders you should look at. You'd be surprised how many downloads accumulate when you're not paying attention. So look through the downloads folder and clean out everything you don't need. Now, in case you forgot where movies and music folders are, here's how to find them. In Finder, right-click on the name of the current folder on top. Navigate to your home folder, the one with the house icon. Here they are. Movies and music can be a pain because it's so difficult to choose what to let go, but sometimes you have to let go of something for the sake of clearing disk space. So delete all the movies and albums you can do without or move them to an external drive. While we're still in the music folder, let's delete outdated iTunes backups. The most recent version of iTunes create backups of your library whenever you update the application. So you only need the latest backup, the one that's up to date, and you can easily get rid of the rest. To do that, open the iTunes folder, and then previous iTunes libraries. Now these are the previous versions of your library. They're all dated, so just delete the old ones you don't need anymore, and done. The next step is removing unnecessary applications. Go through your applications folder and get rid of all the apps you rarely use. But make sure you remove them correctly. Don't just drag them to the trash, because if you do, you'll leave behind tons of other leftover parts and pieces. To uninstall apps the right way, uh, try an app like Clean My Mac 3. It completely removes apps, so you won't have to search for leftover junk. Here's how it works. Launch Clean My Mac. Go to Uninstaller. Select the application you want to remove and click Uninstall. That's it. It saves you tons of space and leaves no junk behind. Next on the checklist is cleaning up your photos library. First, delete the pics you don't need in there, like similar shots or maybe photos that were mistakenly taken, you know, the ones of the ground or something. Uh, once that is done, get rid of the cache. Photos generates a lot of it. You certainly don't see cache files in the app, but they're still taking up space on your disk. We suggest using Clean My Mac 3 to get rid of them because it's so much faster and safer than doing it manually. Here's how it works. In Clean My Mac, go to the Photo Junk module. Hit Scan. As you can see, Clean My Mac has found over 3 gigabytes of cache. And that's how much space you can free up on your disk. Hit Clean and it's done. Now we'll get rid of localization files. Lots of apps come in multiple languages, but you only use one or two. This means the files of those other languages are wasting space on your disk for no good reason. So to find and remove them, open a Finder window, go to Applications, Control-click on an application, and select Show Package Contents. From here, go to Contents, Resources, and look for folders ending in L-P-R-O-J. They store all the language files for this app. ES.L-P-R-O-J is for Spanish, DE is for German, and so on. Decide which languages you'll never use and trash them. Again, a faster alternative to this would be Clean My Mac 3. It lets you get rid of unneeded localizations in just a few clicks. Go to System Junk in Clean My Mac, hit Scan, Hit Review Details to see what it has found. Click on Language Files. See, these here are the language files you don't use, and you can remove them just by hitting Clean. Plus, 
With that one click, you'll also remove tons of other junk that clutters your disk, like system cache or log files. And over 2 gigabytes of junk is gone. If you'd like to try this out on your own Mac, get yourself a copy of Clean My Mac at macpod.com forward slash clean my Mac. It's free to try. The next step is removing old iOS backups. There's a good chance you have iPhone backups you don't need anymore. Say you've already moved all your data to a new device and the backups you made earlier are no longer needed. You can get rid of them by doing this. Click Go in the menu bar. Press and hold the Option key. This will reveal the library folder in the list. Go to Library, Application Support, Mobile Sync, and then Backup. See, these are your iOS backups. You can sort them by date and clean out the old ones to get a bit more extra space. Now, the next on the list is deleting cache files. Remember, we saw them in Clean My Mac System Junk module. So if you've already cleaned System Junk with Clean My Mac, just skip this step. But if not, here's how you can clear cache manually. Go back to the library folder. Open Caches. Delete the files and folders that take up the most space. Now, deleting cache files is generally safe for your Mac, but if you want to be sure you don't accidentally remove anything important, we'd recommend using Clean My Mac 3 here too. It cleans up cache files correctly and safely. And last but not least is cleaning up iOS software updates. These are files that you download every time you want to update the software of your iPhone or iPad via iTunes. After your device has been updated, you don't need the file you downloaded, and you can easily remove it. To do that, go back to Library once again, open the iTunes folder, and go to iPad Software Updates for iPad and iPhone Software Updates for iPhone. Delete downloaded files for any device that you're not using anymore, or the ones that have just been updated. Remember that after your devices have been updated, you don't need these files on your Mac. And you've just deleted tons of junk, which means the trash is full again. So don't forget to empty it once more. And there you go. That's it. We've cleaned up a few things on your Mac, and hopefully this made your startup disk problem go away. But to keep your disk from filling up again, you should do cleanups like this every two to three weeks. So you'll want to bookmark this video for later. Or, if sifting through all the junk files sounds like too much time and trouble, just get a cleaner app like Clean My Mac 3. You can download it for free at macpod.com forward slash clean my Mac. If this video helped, go ahead and share it with other Mac users in need. And to get more helpful guides for your Mac, subscribe to our channel. We've got new videos on the way. That's it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.